Good morning friends, this is Dr. Varun Pandula from Wisdom Super Specialty Dental Clinic, Hyderabad. Uh, I am uh, recording this video on behalf of JuniorDentist.com where we try to help students uh, get all the information regarding dental subjects and dental uh, topics in an easy and understandable way. So here the, uh, the basic of uh, being a dentist is always uh, extraction of the tooth. Uh, that is what every person or every common man uh, relates to a dentist as. So to first uh, to know what exactly extraction is, we need to know about the instruments which are used for extraction. So the most common instruments used are dental forceps which are these and elevators. Elevators we will be talking about in a later video. Uh, so first let us uh, look at the dental forceps of the mandibular region or the lower jaw. Um, so in general each forcep be it maxillary or mandibular comes with comes with three parts the handle, the hinge and the beak. The beak is the working part. So as we know the handle uh, it is used to hold the instrument to give us a grip and to apply the force or transfer the force from your hand to the tooth and whereas the hinge it is used to facilitate the movement of the beak and the handle to transfer the force and this is the working part or the beak of the instrument this is the main part which engages with the tooth and it helps in extraction of the tooth so now that we have known the parts of the instrument let us look at the types of mandibular forceps which are there so first one is the anterior forceps or the incisor forceps. So this is called the anterior forceps as it is used to extract the anterior teeth or the incisors. So these are the incisors as we can see. Okay. So now to identify a mandibular anterior forcep, the first thing is the beak. The handle is the same in all. So the beak is the differentiating factor. So the beak of the anterior forcep is narrow, thin and there is no spacing in between the tip of the beak. This is because the mandibular incisors are very thin and very narrow. So to engage the tooth and to transfer the forces we need narrow space. So that is why there is no spacing between the tip of the beak. So here I will show you how to engage the mandibular forcep and why it is why the instrument is such way designed. So this is how we engage the instrument. Now coming to the premolar forceps or we can even use it for extraction of the canine. So this is the premolar forcep. It is designed similarly to the uh, anterior forcep or mandibular forcep but there is a difference. But the differentiating factor is the beak of the instrument or the working end. The working end is a little wider as compared to the anterior forcep or the incisor forcep and as you can see there is a little spacing in between the tip of the forceps. So this is to, engage, this is to help in accommodating the wider uh, buccolingual dimension of the tooth of the premolars or the canine. So here you can see that the buccolingual dimension of the premolars or the canines is wider as compared to the incisors. So this is the extracted teeth where I will be showing you the buccolingual. So this is the canine, this is the incisor. So you can see that the buccolingual direct width of the canine is more as compared to the incisor. So it helps in engaging or holding on to the premolar or canine in such a way. So that is why there is a little spacing in between the premolar forceps as compared to the incisor forceps. So now coming to the molar forceps. So this is the molar forceps. It is designed in a similar way but the, vikes of the, um, the beaks are even wider as compared to the premolar forceps and uh, you can see that at the tip of the forceps there is a beak or groove which, uh, which is there on the upper and lower ends. So this beak is there. So the tips of the beaks are designed in such a way that they engage the tooth in the furcation area. So the furcation of a tooth, this is the extracted molar which is properly sterilized. So this is the furcation area of the tooth which the furcation is the place, furcation is the
is where the two roots of the tooth meet. So this is the furcation area. So for engaging the tooth in the furcation area, so the molar forceps, the beaks of the molar forceps, so the beaks of the molar forceps, they engage into the furcation area in such a way. Sorry for the inconvenience, there is some problem with the focusing of the camera. So this is how you engage the tooth in the furcation. You can see the tip of the beaks are into the are engaged into the furcation area. So this gives us better grip and better hold onto the tooth for applying the movements and forces which we want to extract the teeth. So now coming to the fourth forcep, this is called the cowhorn forcep. This is named as the cowhorn forcep because of the shape of the beaks. The shape of the beak is designed as a cow's horn. You can see if you see in such a way that it is designed as a cow's horn. So it is named as the cowhorn forceps. So the tip of the cowhorn forceps is angulated towards each other and it is very sharp and pointed. So this is designed in such a way that this tip or of the beak it enters into the furcation area and gives us a, a type of force which elevates the tooth so i'll be showing you how it is done here you can see the tips of the cow horn are have entered into the furcation area entered into the furcation area and when you give when you press or engage the cow horn it elevates the tooth out of the socket it elevates the tooth out of the socket in the molar forceps, you have seen that the beaks have just engaged the outer surface of the tooth, whereas the cowhorn forceps, it has the, the tips of the cowhorn have entered into the furcation area. This gives an elevating force of the tooth. This elevates the tooth out of the socket. So coming to the fifth forcep, mandibular forcep, this is called as the third molar forcep. It is termed as a third molar forces because it, it helps in reaching the third molar, difficult to reach places such as the third molar. The other forceps or the molar forceps or premolar forceps, they have to be engaged in such a way. So they have to be used in such a way. So this is very difficult. This is very difficult in the third molar as there is the cheek and other structures which limit the movement of the forceps to so posteriorly. So that is why the third molar forceps is designed in such a way. It is, you can see that it is designed in a different way as compared to the other forceps. So how, this is how we engage the third molar using the third molar forceps. Third molar you can use even use it to extract the second molar if the accessibility is very low. So you use this forcep to engage the teeth in such a manner. In such a manner and apply forces whichever you feel are uh, useful for extracting the tooth. So this is used in such a way. So this is how you use the third molar forceps to access the teeth. To use the other molar forceps or uh, premolar forceps, this is how you have to do it. Okay, so now that we have known or uh, discussed about the molar mandibular forceps, the anterior, the premolar, the molar, the cow horn and the third molar forceps. Hope that you have understood everything. We will be covering the maxillary forceps in the next video and then we will be going on to the elevators. Hope that you have liked the video. Please give a like if you have enjoyed the video and understood the basics of uh, extraction forceps. We will be coming with many such videos uh, in the future. Please subscribe to juniordentist.com. This is Dr. Varun Pandula signing off. Thank you.